with Tracy, coming to you on Tuesdays, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate, home ownership, and community related. Today, we are continuing on with our series on insurance. We are talking all things insurance. I have with me in the studio, Sana Bag. Welcome back, Sana. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you so much for joining us. Of now. Course. Yeah. Now, if you missed last week's episode, we talked homeowners insurance. So we talked about what the key coverages are and some optional coverages. So if you missed it, go back and watch last week's episode. Today, we're going to be talking optional policies. So we might be talking about some policies you may or may not have heard of before. And uh, so we're going to We're going to learn a little bit about those and find out if it might be something you need to get more information on, right? So um, so those two optional policies we're going to talk about today are... Flood and Umbrella. Flood and Umbrella. Ooh, they they almost sound like they go together, right? (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Think about that. Thinking about the water. (laughs) So, So flood insurance. So what is flood insurance? So flood insurance is essentially, you know, protecting yourself against water coming in from the outside of your home. Um, So if the, and it has to be very specific. So flood insurance um, by definition from FEMA is essentially when uh, it impacts two homes or two acres of land. Okay. So that definition has to hold in order for the flood insurance policy um, to be activated, essentially. So this isn't like we talked about on the last episode, we talked about an optional water policy, water backup policy. So this is different from that because this does not just include your own home. It's two or more, or it has to be, like you said, at least two acres. Of Correct. Land. Yep. It has to okay. be defined as a flood, okay. essentially, in order for the, you know, to, for you to have a claim, essentially. Sure. Um, there are some companies that do allow some wiggle room in that. And so, you know, those are some private companies and we'll get into that as well. Okay. Okay. So two or more homes <laughs> or two acres or more, it has to be a flood, not just a happened with bathtub overflowed and I flooded my <laughs> flooded my bathroom. So. Yeah, that's the interior, right? So right, we're talking right. about water from the Coming exterior. from the outside. Yep, okay. Exactly. All right. So tell us a little bit more. So so flood insurance. Now, why would like is it something that I need to have? Like does a typical homeowner need to have flood insurance? So flood insurance sometimes is required, yeah. and a lot of times it's not in the state of Michigan, right? right Essentially, right. depending on where you're at. Um, 20% of homes that do get flooded are actually in a low-risk zone. So okay. just, you know, throwing out some numbers. So it can happen. Big, so even if you're in a right. low-risk risk zone, you can still, you know, be victim to a, a flood. Correct. Yep. Okay. And so essentially, you know, if you're required to have flood insurance, that's determined by what's called flood zones. So every home is assigned a flood zone essentially by what's called the FEMA maps. Um, and those are available online if someone wanted to kind of see where where their home lies or whatnot, or they can reach out to their insurance agent and they would be able to tell them as okay. well. And FEMA, so, okay, I don't know if you know what it stands for, but I'm, it's like the federal it, emergency. It, emergency. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically, it's, it's from the government, right? So the government puts out these maps and they look at the topography of, you know, each area mm-hmm. and, you know, based on how high or low, you know, uh, the land sits, that's how they they deter- make these determinations, right, for, for what they're going to do. And some of it is, you know, uh, you know, water, you know, what waterways are nearby. I mean, there's a lot of right. different factors. There's a lot and, of elements. And we're not here to get into that detail. <laughs> you are welcome to uh, – actually, if I have any FEMA, you know, employees or experts or anybody who would like to come on, we can do a whole episode on that. Yes. But, but yes. we are not going to get into that. You can look online if you want to see or are curious where your home falls on that on that map, those flood maps. Yep. Flood zones. So. Yeah. And insurance agents normally are able to pull up those zones and kind of see, yeah. you know, when we run the quotes, we're able to see what zones you're in yep. as well. And that's, so that's actually something that happens because you need to get homeowner's insurance before you can close on a home. So when you're making a home purchase, you, that is something that you need to have set up prior to being able to close. Right. And so that is something that is checked. And if you are in a flood zone, what is considered a flood zone, you are then required to have this flood insurance policy. 
Yes. Right. So you're required to have it if you are going through a loan. Um, if it's yep. a cash transaction, then it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Our <laughs> rules are, see, cash is king. That's cash there is king. Go. That's why cash there deals are always, you know, rise to the top in the multiple offer situations. Yep, but exactly. let's put that aside for now. <laughs> yep. yeah. So if you so, are going through a loan transaction and your home is, uh, you know, in a high risk flood zone, right. the mortgage company will require you to have flood insurance. Right. Um, FHA and VA loans normally require uh, the flood insurance to be from um, the FEMA flood insurance, essentially. So there are certain okay. companies that provide that. Okay. Um, and then there's also private companies as well. So if you have a conventional loan or, you know, some of the other uh, options out there, you do have a lot more options then to get private flood insurance, which could essentially be a little bit cheaper. Okay. And I know we were, we were chatting the other day and I was like, you know, it's, very expensive flood insurance. You just said, well, not necessarily. So when yep. when can flood insurance be more costly and when is it not? So when you're in a high risk flood zone, mm -hmm. essentially it's going to be, you know, a couple thousand, right? That's, yeah. that's where the sticker shock comes in when you're trying yeah. to purchase a <laughs> home. <like>, what? <laughs> Why is my flood insurance more than the replacement cost of my home? It makes no right. sense. Yeah. 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 And, you know, people love lake <laughs> homes and things like that. And right? so- the cost of flood insurance is going to be astronomical if yeah. it is a high risk flood zone. Um, if it's not, if it's, for example, X flood zones, a lot of homes are uh, within that, um, which is low to moderate. Um, yeah. It can be just a couple hundred bucks. So okay. and for the year, right? For the year, for the year. exactly. Yeah, which so, really is is not bad, not yeah, much. For exactly. Year, yeah. And it's flexible coverage, so you can get different levels of coverage. Okay. For example, if you have a two story home, most likely a flood is going to impact the first. Right. Story. So you can, you know, get lower replacement costs. Right. That we talked about in the last yeah, episode yeah. <laughs> um, for flood insurance, essentially. Okay. So, yeah, you do have some options if you are in a low risk flood zone. Um, so that helps. Okay. And so, so being in Michigan, um, so, and we have the, you know, the flood zones and the maps, and there are some homes that are in those flood zones that, maybe don't necessarily need to be in the higher risk category. Um, you know, the, the maps were done, most of them were done a, a while back yeah, and they don't <laughs> necessarily get updated unless someone, you know, takes the initiative to have them updated for specific <laughs> properties. So that was something that, that a home can actually be taken out of the high risk area if it actually is not at high risk. Yep, exactly. Right. So yeah. I actually had a client last year we did this with. So initially they were going through a loan, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously closing and there's only so much time you have. Yeah. And so they had to purchase flood insurance because it was required on the loan and on the property. So it cost them $3,000 for the year, yeah. <clears throat> which was much higher than yes. their actual homeowner's <laughs> policy. <laughs> and um, so essentially, you know, I recommended to them that they can actually contact a land survey company mm -hmm. and they can come out, take a look and see if they actually are required to have flood insurance essentially. Right. So what the land survey company will do is they'll take a look and see based on, you know, various a aspects of um, their readings <clears throat> as far as how high the water can get, things like that, historical data. Um, they'll see if they can actually take you out of a flood zone. Yes. So there yep. can be, you know, some remedies or um, you can get what's called an elevation certificate as well <clears throat> that can help you with flood insurance. Right. And so the the land survey companies, because I have, have actually done this with a client as well, recommended yep. someone and they were able to have the home they were planning to purchase taken out of the flood zone. But it, essentially what they need to do, the land survey um company or expert needs to come out and they build a case, right? right? So they have to, they do the research, they provide the pictures, and then they basically have to build the case and present that right. to officially have the home taken out of this high risk flood, flood zone. So, but it's possible. Not all yeah. of them can, right? Yes. So, yeah. you know, you, you might, you might hire somebody to take a look at it and they could go through and say, it's not possible. But, um, I mean, between the two, I know we have, um, some very good contacts who they know, you know, yes. they, they know what they're doing. They're not just in it to, you know, oh, here, let me take a look. No, it's very, you know, very thorough and can. Yep. And they'll yeah. let you know the likelihood right, right. up right. front. And yep. so 
that's the first part of it. And then the second part is getting yeah. it out of that flood zone and they're able to help with that. Yes, absolutely. Yes, they actually kind of take care of all of it. Yes. Yeah. Really, really <laughs> seamless and easy for the homeowner or, yeah. or home purchaser. So, yes. So. Yeah, so now that my client no longer needs to or it does, doesn't actually require the flood insurance, right. you know, you can reach out to your mortgage company, let them know, provide the documentation, and then they will essentially get rid of that requirement and you can cancel your policy. And all of a sudden you have $3,000 in your pocket again. <laughs> exactly. Yep. And then at that point, you know, now that they are in a lower flood zone, I always recommend, especially if you're near, a, uh, you know, a land of water. Right. So um, to have flood insurance still. Right. Um, and essentially because you're now in a low risk uh, flood zone, the cost is going to be much less. Right. It's minimal. So it right. still protects you in the event. Right. Exactly. Because there had to be a reason that you were put in it in the first place <laughs> at some point. Right. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the government couldn't just want our money. <laughs> Uh, so, so that's blood insurance. <laughs> Tia Tracy's going to get flagged. <laughs> like, all right. So, yeah. so that's blood insurance. Now, the other optional policy that you're, we're going to talk about is umbrella. Yeah. So now the water's not on the ground. Now yes. it's, but it's not water. <laughs> but we're not talking water. So what is an umbrella policy? So umbrella policy protects all of your assets, essentially. Okay. Um, It's higher liability coverage. So it's... um. It's essentially overarching your home, auto, you know, if you have motorcycles, if you have a boat, um, those elements, if you even have investment properties, okay, which we'll talk about. Yeah. But so those, all of those elements are covered with the right. overarching umbrella. <laughs> Under the umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say, for example, you know, for an auto accident, like if you have um, kind of on the higher end, 250000 um per person limit mm -hmm. for liability. You get into an accident, the person in the other vehicle, you know, par is paralyzed now. Mm -hmm. If they sue you, you know, they're going to go after your um, auto insurance first. Right. And so after that 250000 is taken care of right. and complete, let's say the settlement's like a, a million, okay. right? So then they have the option of coming after you personally. That's where this umbrella policy comes in, where okay. you just want to have that level of protection above and beyond right. your, you know, core policy. Right. Okay. And, uh, and so in the state of Michigan, you know, wages can be garnished too, things like that. So that's why um, having an umbrella is very key. Okay. And and the last episode, we talked about, you know, one of the key coverages in homeowners insurance is liability. And so having one of these um, umbrella policies then if something were to happen, somebody at your home or something along those lines, this would kick in over and above the liability on that policy. Correct. So, yeah. Yep. You have to have certain levels on your core policies in order for the umbrella to kick in. Okay. Um, but yeah, essentially it's yep. overarching all of your assets. Okay. Good to know. So there is additional coverage. So if you have a lot of assets, um, yeah. you know, that you want to protect, um, or even if you don't, you know, you, I mean, cause like you said, your yeah. future wages can be garnished. So, um, you know, if, if you want to have that additional layer of protection and security, then, um, an umbrella policy might be right for you. Yep. So. Exactly. Yep. All right. Anything that we missed on flood and umbrella? This is, this was a fun episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't uh, think so. I think we right, covered, we, uh, we got covered it all covered. All right. right. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. So, but if you do have any additional questions, um, you can reach out to your insurance agent or feel free to contact Sana. She's always a wealth of information and happy to help. And, um, so, but join us now next week, we are going to continue our insurance conversation and we are going to be talking about investment properties. So if you have been curious, maybe you've been thinking about um, getting an investment property, maybe you already are a landlord or have investments, um, but if you want to learn a little bit more and understand the basics of insurance for investment properties, tune in next week. And if you missed homeowner's insurance, go back and check out last week's episode. Lots of great information. So. Thank you, Sana, for joining us today. Thank you, Tracy. Thanks, <laughs> and thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Tea with Tracy.